Hey guys, so I'm spending about three weeks in Kazakhstan and I thought I would spend some time to tell you about their permanent residency program. I'm having a coffee today, so it's like perfect time to tell you about it. So it's actually one of the like easiest programs to do depending on your citizenship, like nationality or whichever passport you use. And fundamentally, to get permanent residency today in Kazakhstan, all you really need like is a clean criminal background check from your home country on a national level. And you're also going to need about 10,000 US dollars to be deposited into a Kazakhstani bank, not as a donation, not as anything special. It's literally to show the government that you have the funds to live in the country without asking, you know, help from like the social programs. So basically you deposit the $10,000 and you wait about a month or two for the application to go through. And once you get your permanent residency, then you're free to use that money for whatever you want. You can send it back to your bank of preference or you can keep it there. Kazakhstani banks in their local currency, they do are offering about like 17% just to hold like deposits. Anyways, let me tell you how I see Kazakhstan as a foreigner. I will admit that I've only really spent time in like the two big cities, which is uh, Almaty and Astana. Astana being like the political capital where all the government stuff is and then you have Almaty which is more the economic capital. I will say out of the two cities Almaty tends to be a lot more fun. There's a lot more stuff to do. There's a lot more foreigners. There's a lot more there's just a lot more people. I do find that Astana I, I actually prefer Astana over Almaty. Astana tends to be a lot cheaper when it comes to housing. You can get a really nice apartment in like prime areas for like 400 600 US dollars and I'm talking you know, two bedroom, like brand new. There's also like high speed internet all over the country. You can get like 500 megabits per second for like, I don't know, 20, $25 a month. I do think some companies do offer up to one gig, but I'm not hundred percent sure. But anyways, overall, if you're looking for a place to like start a business online and you're looking for low cost, you're looking like not to have any issues with uh, visas and stuff. Again, small deposit, you get your residency. One thing I will mention about Kazakhstan and especially Astana is because of the thing in Russia at the moment, there is a lot of like young men in Astana at the moment from Russia. And a lot of them are actually quite talented when it comes to IT stuff. Like uh, I've met a lot of developers. I've met a lot of like uh, just anything related to IT. There's, there is a lot of talent in the city at the moment. And honestly, a lot of them are looking for jobs. So if you're working in IT, it's actually, I would actually say it's a pretty good place to be for IT related stuff. I will also make a video into how you can get 0% tax rate if you open a company in Astana or Kazakhstan, but that'll be in a later video. So anyways, just to tell you about the residency process here in Kazakhstan, and I'll be very quick. The process starts in your home country where you do need to get a non-criminal background check, which must be clean. You have to apostolate. Don't worry about translating the non-criminal background check into Russian or Kazakh language yet. You can do that once you land inside of the country. It does have to be national level criminal background check. The other thing you need is you need to contact the consulate slash embassy from Kazakhstan in your home country and get something called a B8 visa. It's rather easy to get depending on your citizenship. With my Canadian passport, I was able to get the B8 visa fairly easily. Literally, I just sent in a form along with like a cover letter and the fee. It's like 200, 300 US dollars. And I got my B8 visa. And you can also tell them when you plan to come to Kazakhstan. So you can apply, you can actually apply ahead of time and just say, hey, I'll be there in two months. And the visa will be valid for like 90 days. It can be single entry, multi-entry. And then you decide when you come in and you have those 90 days to complete the process. So once you have your visa and you have your non-criminal background check, make sure to apostle the non-criminal background check. If for whatever reason your country is not part of the apostle system, then you have to get it authenticated with the Kazakhstani embassy. So once you have all those things, you fly over to any city in Kazakhstan. It doesn't have to be Astana. It doesn't have to be Almaty. I will say, because it's a common question, you probably do need to speak either Russian or Kazakh to go through the process. I don't think you'll be able to go through the process just in English. While I find that Almaty and Astana have like a lot, a lot of English in general, at least in the touristy part of the cities, meaning, you know, I spend a lot of time in like China and Russia, and I would say Kazakhstan has like a high level of English where like people at the grocery store sometimes speak English, but the immigration process, like you will have to do it in Russian or Kazakh or have someone to help you go through the process. Anyways, once you land in the country, you need to find a, it's like a police station that's dedicated for immigration. There you will visit once and you will ask for like the specific requirements for that one office, but usually the requirements are actually the same which is, of course, your B8 visa, non-criminal background check from your home country must be issued within the last six months. You must also get a medical check inside of the country, which is fairly easy to get. 
immigration office will give you the details on where you can get this medical check. You're also going to need a notarized translated copy of your non-criminal background check and your passport, which you can also do inside of the country. And really the main step is to get the $10,000 into a Kazakhstani bank account. Now that one's a little bit, it's actually not that difficult. Um, what you need to do is to get a tax number from the country, from Kazakhstan. Doing that is actually fairly easy. You visit the tax agency here in Kazakhstan. You have to bring your passport. You have to have a Kazakhstani number, which is fairly easy to get. And you must also bring a notarized translated copy of your passport, which you can get inside of the country. You go to the tax agency and about like an hour or two hours later you get your tax number the tax number here is called um i n n or i i n one, one of those two i will say about the tax agency in kazakhstan is like fairly fairly sophisticated i'm actually quite impressed with how that stuff works here everything is truly digital and at the end of it they do give you like a usb and you can actually if once you get your residency you get a usb and you can actually like even like buy real estate through like a USB, a bit like how Estonia did the e-residency stuff. So like props to Kazakhstan for doing that. Uh, although I've never tried to buy real estate through uh, through the USB, but I've been told that it is possible. Anyways, once you get the tax number, you have to go to a bank. Each bank has different regulations for different people. And at this point, you only have your B8 visa. So you don't have a residency yet. So some banks will have restrictions depending on your nationality. That being said, you know, if you're from a first world country, I do think kind of banks tend to be a bit more flexible. So I've seen like a couple of friends that I have from Germany and stuff. They had the same experience as me as a Canadian citizen where they went to the bank and as long as they had the tax number and a phone number, they were able to do it. But I do have some friends that are not from like Canada, the US, uh, Germany, etc. And they had to show some like labor contracts and stuff like that. But anyways, all that stuff you can figure out once you are actually in Kazakhstan. One nice thing I will say about Kazakhstani banks that I'm quite impressed with is they do offer like a multi-currency bank accounts, meaning you can have like USD, euros and tenge. And for the process of the residency, you can actually hold the money in USD or euros. So you're not forced to like hold it in tenge if you don't really want to. You can also hold it like a, a little bit of euros, a little bit of USD, a little bit of uh, tenge. And then anyways, once you deposit the money into the bank, you get a letter from the bank saying like, hey, this guy has X much money in his bank account. You take that letter, you submit all the documents to the immigration. And in about 45 to 60 days, you should be getting your permanent residency, or I should say like the right to apply for permanent residency. You go apply for the permanent residency and you should get it in like about a week. You get like a nice little card. You get a USB that gives you access to like everything online. Uh, it's super handy. I'm quite impressed. And that's it for permanent residency stuff in Kazakhstan. I will make another video about opening a business in Kazakhstan because they do offer 0% tax rate, but there are some huge disadvantages to doing business in Kazakhstan, uh, which I will cover on the video. And uh, I will see you in the next video, guys.